We're now going to turn our attention to one of the most interesting and powerful transforming operators that's defined in Project Reactor's Flux class. As you may recall, transforming operators are used to transform values and or types that are emitted by a flux. And in this case, we're going to take a look at the flat map operator. We're also going to take a look to see how this operator can be used to implement a very interesting concurrency idiom that can be used to allow various fluxes to run in parallel on a multi-core platform. So let's start by talking about the flat map operator. This operator is used to transform the elements emitted by a flux, ideally in an asynchronous way, as we'll see in a moment. The elements are actually emitted into something called inner publishers. You can see here how we have a function that's going to be parameterized by some generic types, one of which is a publisher. Each type element of type T for the input is mapped to a publisher of type R. The publisher will emit one or more items. And the key, element, the key thing to keep you in track here is one or more. So you can actually have multiple elements that are emitted. These inner publishers are then flattened into one flux by doing a merging operation. So what gets returned as a result of this will be output that potentially can interleave. This is a, a particularly going to be true when this is used for concurrent processing together with the flat map concurrency item that we're going to talk about in just a moment. One of the interesting things about the flat map operator as well is that the number of output elements that are emitted from flat map can be different from the number of elements that are input. And this is very different from the map operator that we talked about before. With map, there's always a one-to-one -one correspondence between input elements and output elements. But with flat map, there can be more, the same, or less output than comes as input. Likewise, as with map, flat map can also be used to transform the types and or the values of the elements that it processes. This method is often used to trigger concurrent processing. Not the only way to use it, but it's very commonly used this way. And we'll talk more about this when we talk about the flat map concurrency idiom in an upcoming part of this lesson. Here's an example where we're going to return a flux to a multiplied big fraction by using the flat map concurrency idiom that we'll talk about in more detail. This example also, of course, shows up in the case study that we'll walk through in great detail at the end of this lesson. Flat map is something that's also found in Project Reactor as well as in RxJava. So RxJava has an observable flat map operator that works in essentially the same way as the one that's in Project Reactor. Interestingly enough, both these operations are also very similar to the flat map operator that's defined in Java streams. So this particular example here is one where we have two lists of strings, and we go ahead and turn those lists into a stream, and then we'll have a stream of lists of strings, and then we use flat map in order to turn it into a stream of strings, as opposed to a stream of lists of strings. Flat map does not guarantee the order of the items in the resulting stream. So you can have things interleave and come in different orders. If you really want the order to matter, then make sure you use concat map instead of flat map. It's always not always the case you need to give that ordering and concat map is a little bit more expensive because it maintains that order. But it's important to realize that concat map will order things in a way that flat map may not. So now that we talked a little bit about flat map, let's talk about the project reactor flat map concurrency idiom and then walk through a more detailed example so you can see how everything actually works. So flat map is often used when each item that's emitted by a stream needs to apply its own threading operators. So in other words, you want to be able to have a bunch of computations take place in a pool of threads. So this is what's known as the flat map concurrency idiom. You can take a look at the link at the bottom of the slide for more information about this particular idiom. But I'm going to walk through the idiom so you can understand how it works. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start out by using the from iterable factory method to convert a list of big fractions into a flux stream of big fractions. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to call flat map. And what that's going to do is it's going to iterate through the flux stream, multiplying each big fraction in the stream in a parallel thread pool. So let's take a look and see how this actually works. So as you can see here, the code that's inside of flat map, which is essentially a lambda expression, is going to take each big fra fraction and then process concurrently in the parallel thread pool. So the first thing we do is we take the first big fraction that's emitted in that stream, 
and we use the just method to go ahead and emit it in a nested flux. We then subscribe that nested flux using subscribe on to run in the context of the parallel thread pool. And then we go ahead and apply the map operation to multiply that big fraction by, in this case, a, a constant. So each big fraction will be multiplied in perhaps a different thread in the underlying parallel thread pool. And all those things will be dispersed across different cores on a multi-core processor. After all the concurrent processing is done in the parallel thread pool, then we're going to use the reduce operator, which we'll talk about in more detail shortly, in order to be able to add up all the big fractions that we multiplied to create the single final sum. And we'll show a lot more about that when we look at the actual example in detail in the case study. So what I'd like to do at this point is take a step back and compare the map operator and the flat map operator. So they have some things in common and they also have some differences. The map operator transforms each value in a flux stream into a single value. So it's kind of a one-to-one -one mapping. So it's intended for synchronous, non-blocking, one-to-one transformations, as we've seen in a number of examples so far. In contrast, the flat map operator transforms each value in a flux stream into an arbitrary number, in other words, zero or more values. And it's intended to be used more for asynchronous, often non-blocking, one to n transformations. So in some sense, it's, it's a bit more powerful and also, of course, more, more complicated to understand and likely to be slightly less efficient in some ways as well. But that's OK, because when you start using it with things like the concurrency idiom, you're going to get a big return in investment because of the fact that you can actually run all those inner publishers in different threads in a thread pool. So that's the end of the discussion of the flat map operator in Project Reactor's Flux class. Very powerful operator. We're going to see it get used quite a bit in the upcoming examples.